What's up, my name is Leslie, and okay, I've dreamt of being a lot of things. Okay, in, in kindergarten, I remember I really wanted to be a firefighter. I wanted to be a traveling storyteller at one point. I thought I was gonna be a singer-songwriter at one point. I also thought I was gonna build portable classrooms. Also, maybe graffiti artists. Sorry, God, for all the buildings I ruined. Um, and then I went to college, college for speech therapy. But if you would've asked me like early high school what I wanted to be when I grew up, I swore, y'all, I swore I was gonna be <laughs> the first woman in the NBA. And some of your small group leaders are laughing because they know exactly what movie I was watching to get that idea. Y'all, listen. I'm a painter. There is not a single athletic bone in my body, but when I was younger, I would make my dad come out to the driveway after work and play me in a game of 21, just about like every night for probably all of two weeks. But I swore I was gonna be in the NBA, right? I thought I was getting good too, cause like I was winning. Looking back now, obviously he was letting me win, but it's fine, okay? Like he'd go back in the house and I'd be like, dad, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stay out here till I get like a hundred in a row. I mean like 10 in a, Maybe three in a row, I don't know. Like I, I literally spent most of the time chasing the ball like down the street. Um, but if you would have asked me what I wanted to do when I grew up, I definitely would have said, play professional basketball. And over time, my hoop dreams deflated as I realized that I, I just didn't have that kind of talent, okay? But hey, you know, dream big. And so I know some of you have also had that same question, right? How many of you have been asked, what do you wanna be when you grow up? Right, and you've probably had all types of answers when you were a little kid, but now that you're in high school and thinking about what happens next, whether that be college or taking a gap year or going to the workforce or joining the military, see, chances are that this question is on your mind now more than ever, right? These days, grown up is right around the corner and you're probably feeling some kind of pressure around like how to answer it. But the problem is we don't actually feel grown up enough right now to have all of this figured out, right? The question feels so much more complicated now than it did when you were five years old. Why? Well, it could be a number of reasons. Um, like there are so many things that you're interested in, right? With so many potential directions that we could go, how are we supposed to decide which one we should take? Or maybe it's that nothing seems to really interest us enough to make our whole lives about it, right? Like how are you supposed to know right now while you're 15, 16, 17, 18, what you wanna do forever, right? The idea of having to pick something right now at this stage just seems a little stressful, okay? Or maybe we're not even thinking about the future. Maybe you're thinking the future? I'm still trying to figure out how to keep my room clean right now. Like, come on, like I can't be bothered with thinking about the future. That's like a ton of life plans. Or maybe you feel pressure to have it all figured out because Everyone around you seems to have a plan, right? You sit next to that kid in geometry class who's like, I'm gonna be a neurosurgeon, it's gonna take about 3.5 years, I'm gonna go to this school, I'm gonna do all this, and they have it all laid out and they know how they're gonna make it happen. And maybe that's just not you. Or maybe you just don't have the energy to think about the future because there are too many problems right now. Right? Maybe your family is struggling to make ends meet. And so to make future plans, it feels like a luxury that you don't have right now. Like I know that was part of my story in high school. So like in the church world, we ask a similar question to this, right? We, we ask a similar question to what do you wanna be when you grow up? Except in the church world, ours sounds more like, uh, what's God's plan for your life? Or to get real churchy, probably the one I heard the most often was, hey, have you, have you figured out your calling, God's calling for your life? Like talk about pressure, that is a huge question. And when you bring God into it, it sometimes feels like even more pressure. That's why we wanna get it right, right? Because we want what we do with our lives to mean something. We want a sense of purpose. In fact, you could put it this way. The question we're all really asking deep down in some way or another is, what difference can I make? All right, so that's what we're gonna talk about today, okay? We're gonna look at a passage of scripture written by a guy named Paul, who we've talked about a lot in this series, right? It's actually a part of a letter that he wrote to some Jesus followers in a city called Corinth. He said this, after all, who is Apollos? Who is Paul? We are only God's servants through whom you believed the good news. Each of us did the work the Lord gave us. I planted the seed in your hearts and Apollos watered it but it was God who made the seed grow. It's not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. The one who plants and the one who waters work together for the same purpose, and both will be rewarded for their own hard work, for both are God's workers. 
and you are God's field. You are God's building. Okay, so first things first, okay. Uh, hello, who is this Apollos guy, okay? Well, Apollos was another church leader, like Paul. He was actually very, very well known. And in fact, they were both so popular that people would go around and brag about whether they were Team Apollos or Team Paul, right? They would be bragging and they'd, they'd kind of make it really clear whose team they were on. And Paul and Apollos would be like today's TikTok influencers, kind of, like if you were like, oh, I, I only mess with these people, not these people. But Paul is saying that people are looking at it all wrong. Instead of deciding who's more important and who has done better work, Paul levels the playing field, right? He says, we are God's servants. Paul is telling us that that is what matters, not what we're doing, but how we are doing it and for what purpose. All right, and then, then he starts talking about plants. Okay, now if you're like me, you understand that keeping plants alive is a lot of hard work, okay? There's the watering, there's the right amount of sunlight, there's all the other things I don't really know. Like that's maybe why I've killed several plants in the last two years, but trust me, it's more difficult than it sounds, right? Paul is saying that when it comes to plants, the person who does the planting has a specific role. And then the rain plays a specific role. The sunshine has a specific role. Everything plays a part, so it would be dumb, it would be pointless to sit there and argue about which role matters more, right? Which role is more important is the wrong question. A better question is, did each role accomplish what only it could accomplish? In other words, it's possible that you and I, like we're spending a lot of time trying to imagine a future that impresses the most people or makes us the most money or has the most influential outcome when we should be asking, am I doing what only I can do? Am I doing what only I am uniquely wired to do? When this becomes the question we ask, we can stop worrying if our future plans are big enough or if they'll make us famous or earn us the most followers. We can stop stressing out about whether or not we've chosen the right career path to go into. Our career doesn't have to be our purpose for living, right? How we pay the bills can be different than the hobby or the interest that we have that we're uniquely wired to do in the world. When Paul says that each one did the work the Lord gave them, he pointed out that everyone's work was different. Each person is uniquely gifted to do something. The point isn't to create the biggest or highest paying future or the highest purpose, right? The point is to do the thing that's just for you to do. The point is, God is behind it all. No matter what you do, no matter what part you play, every part, no matter how big or how small, matters. Participating matters. Doing your part, showing up is what matters. And so maybe you're asking, okay, I get it, but like, what's my part? Well, okay, this might be the most freeing thing I say in this whole talk. Listen closely. Your part is to be who God created you to be right here, right now. See, I spent a lot of my life thinking I had to choose one purpose in order for me to have the kind of impact I wanted to have on the world. I like had talents in a lot of different areas and people would constantly say like, you're not gonna be successful, you have to choose one and focus on that one. See, the, the biggest problem became that I was trying to find what that purpose was. I thought that as soon as I got that figured out, everything else would come together, right? I saw it as kind of a like choose your own adventure book, right? Have you ever heard of these? It's, it's one of those books where you read, you get to the end of the chapter, and then there'd be a question like, if Brian makes the winning shot, head to page 54. If Brian misses, go to page 62. And whatever you decide determines how the rest of the story goes. That's kind of what it felt like, right? That's what finding your purpose can feel like. Like there's one decision that sets the course for everything but that's not really how it works. We don't have one purpose to find, we have a bigger purpose to join. And that's God's purpose. Our responsibility is to bring what we have and to join in with what's already happening. This isn't a one-time thing that happens when you pick your elective courses or when you decide whether or not you're gonna go to college or you decide what to major in. This is an everyday choice to do the next right thing. It's a decision to participate in what God is doing right where you are. Okay, so listen, let me put it this way. Your purpose isn't your job. 
It isn't your financial status. It isn't your relationship status, like whether you're gonna get married or stay single. It's not even the future parental role that you're thinking of, of like, oh, if I'm gonna be a biological parent or a step parent or a foster parent or adoptive parent or no parent at all. It's none of those things because listen, all of those things can change. Some of those things may or may not happen to you. You may or may not even want those things but you can still have purpose, right? You can have purpose whether you are unemployed or whether you are the CEO, okay? You can have purpose if you change jobs a dozen times over the course of your life, or if you stay in the same place and retire from the same job, right? You have purpose if you get married or if you don't, if you have kids or if you don't. God's purpose isn't tied to the labels that you wear. The point is, are you using what you have wherever you are right now to do what only you? can do. See, I hope you feel the freedom when you hear that, that there isn't one thing you have to discover to make or break your purpose. Your purpose, God's plan for your life, it's not this one magical thing, right? It's to participate by doing what you are certain that God wants you to do. And that is not a mystery, right? What does participating in God's purpose look like for you right here, right now? Well, it may be a lot simpler than you think. And it may still be challenging, but it, it may be things like being kind to people in your class, like all people in your class, all, yes, even him, even her, all people in your class. It may be showing up on time and working hard in practice. It may be helping your family by getting a job or making sacrifices when things get tight financially. It may be seeking out opportunities to help others. And it may be showing respect and honor to those above you and below you, right? You could say it this way. Let's just simplify it, right? Your purpose is to love. Love God, love people, and love life. Doing that exactly where you are in the way that only you can do is exactly what God wants for you. And love is possible no matter what path you choose. You can have purpose before you have a career, a plan, or a way forward. You can have purpose every day by joining in what God says he's doing. Because God is always in the business of making the world better, of making the world right. And that's a story that we can join right here, right now. Like, think of it this way. You think about the big picture of all the things happening in life. You need to understand this. You matter more than you think. You can be part of what God is doing to make the world better. It doesn't mean we'll get everything we want in life. It doesn't mean that everything will work out in the way that we want. When we talk about God making the world better, it doesn't mean that God will make our bank accounts bigger or increase the number of likes and follows on our social media. We're talking about a bigger version of better, right? God's better means that we play a part in making the world around us better with love and actions and to participate. We have to first pay attention to what he's doing to even know how or where to join in. Like look around, it's already happening. All you have to do is take part. Imagine if we all began to realize that we matter more than we think, that our role in the big picture matters. What if we had confidence in doing our part, which is to be who God created us to be right here, right now? What if we found purpose in showing as much of his love to the world as we possibly can? Wouldn't that be a world that you'd wanna live in? So as we wrap up this series, I hope you know that whatever big questions you have, you don't have to deal with them alone. That's why we have small groups and small group leaders, because we don't want you to think that you have to ask questions and try to find the answers. See, life's biggest questions deserve better answers.